Hi there! Today we're going to take a look at file input and output with Java. It's important to highlight now though that file I.O. can be managed in many ways using many classes in Java and we will just be looking at one of those ways today as an example. You will have noticed in the programs that you have written to date that once you exit the program any data that you may have entered is lost. Using file I.O. we can store this data in a file so that we can retrieve it later when the program is run. All input and output in Java is accomplished by classes called streams. Input streams provide ways to read data from an input device to a program one item at a time. Output streams write the data one item at a time in the opposite direction. And it's important for us to understand streams if we're going to understand file I.O. Devices may represent a variety of source or destination points, for example, disk files, devices, other programs, a network socket, and memory arrays. There are a number of different types of streams available to us. Each one is designed to carry out different, carry different types of data. Byte streams, for example, are one of the lowest levels of file I.O. Um, they are the most primitive approach, and really should be avoided if there is an alternative. We don't want to be sending everything in byte streams if it can be avoided. Character streams, on the other hand, are good if the data contains character data. It will auto translate to or from a local character set and will save us time later if different character sets are required. Some examples of these are file reader and file writer. Buffered streams then are line oriented IO. And here it allows us not only to handle the character data, but to take entire words or lines at a time of text and write or read that to and from a file. And the classes that we would use there are buffered reader and buffered writer. Again, these are just some types of streams, not all of the streams that are available to us, but the ones that we're going to take a look at in this example. As with most things in Java, we also then need to know where to find the classes and the functionality that we're going to need. So in this instance, we need to make sure we import the java.io package. All of, the, all of the classes that we need are in the java.io package. And if we want to import all of those together, we do import java.io.star. But it's more efficient to import just the classes we want. And we'll see what they are as we move along.